Hey there lads and ladies, it is Petrifying Pumpkins and I am back with a Firewall Ultra video courtesy of this behind me. My hands are cut off, but you can see it's the Unreal Engine 5 interview that Unreal did with First Contact Entertainment, primarily focusing on Firewall Ultra. There's a few snippets about Solaris Off World Combat 2 as well, which is upcoming, was recently leaked and then confirmed. But the majority of this will be focusing on Firewall Ultra. Now, this came out a few days ago. Unfortunately, I was busy, so I wasn't able to cover this until now. But I've been itching to get into us and talk about some juicy, juicy details that we have here. And so let's just dig right into us and we'll tackle them as we go along. So, Firewall Ultra uses Unreal Engine 5 to evolve the VR Shooter franchise on PlayStation VR. Two. Now, I've highlighted the stuff that I think is, you know, the most interesting, so we're not going to go piece by This is a very long kind of interview, so I don't want to go into all of us. Uh, but this is from Mike Williams, and uh, I don't think it says who on First Contact Entertainment they're talking to here. But if I find that out, I will add that into this video. So, the very first question they ask is, for the uninitiated, what is Firewall Ultra about? And I've highlighted this part here. Uh, groups of four, just in case some people were thinking maybe they've upped the player count or whatever, we do have confirmation that Firewall Ultra will be teams of four maximum. So the next question then is basically how does Firewall Ultra raise the bar over Firewall Zero Hour? So I've highlighted here that the entire visual approach has been retooled with a focus on detailed real-time lighting and all of the gameplay has been extensively refined to take advantage of the PSVR 2 hardware. So I highlighted that because it's the first indication we get of real-time light, and this is something that's going to pop up again and again during this interview. They're putting a big focus on how cool, basically, that the lighting system they have in this game is, and that was made possible by Unreal Engine 5, essentially. For example, there is extensive use of eye tracking in the game, sometimes in subtle ways to add detail and control to key interactions. And then that's another big thing. Of course, we've already seen them show off how eye tracking works, and they will talk about that shortly as well. We've seen that the weapon wheel selection, you can control that with your eyes. We've seen how the grenades can be thrown, well, aimed with your eyes, I should say. And now that we've all had, well, not everyone, but if you have a PSVR 2, if you've played Horizon Call of the Mountain, for example, you can, you know yourself, I know myself, how quick and responsive that eye tracking is. It is maybe one of the best features of the PSVR 2. It's certainly got like a huge amount of potential and it sounds like Firewall Ultra is, you know, really gonna take advantage of that, which is great to me. So this next one now, I've noticed in my own Discord community that, uh, you know, this is a bit of a controversial one, I think. So the question is, can you talk about the different weapons slash loadouts First Contact have it's developed for the game? We have pushed VR weapons to the next level. So here's the, the key point of highlighted. No longer do you need additional peripherals and you can basically see that as a direct comment on the aim or whatever third party stuff comes out. We have developed a brand new concept for aim down sights, which is commonly known as ADS, which mimics and improves on the familiar 2D functionality for ADS. It's so natural you often don't even realize what is happening behind the scenes to make it feel so good. Now, we don't know what this is exactly. Nobody has seen this in action, so we don't know for certain what they're talking about. However, with Resident Evil 8 after coming out, it does sound like it is similar to the system that they have in place there, where basically you're using two-handed weapons or even a handgun, whatever, you bring it up to your face and once you get close to your eye, your face, it does this thing where it snaps. It snaps to the headset kind of and then it's tracking your front arm. So it doesn't really matter what your back arm is doing. And the reason for this would be to compensate for the lack of aim controller because if you're playing Pavlov, if you're playing um, the Light Brigade, you know there's plenty of games out there now where you've got two-handed weapons and you're using two motion controllers and you're aiming your gun and maybe this is out of whack with this and it just doesn't feel as good as the aim controller does slash did. So it seems that First Contact Entertainment, they recognized that this was an issue. They recognized that something should be done about this. So they've come along with a software-based solution because look, we're not getting an aim to, at least not in time for whenever Ultra comes out, it seems. So maybe the next best alternative for them was to do what Resident Evil 8 has done. Now, of course, this is pure speculation. It sounds like it's similar to what they're doing, but they could have a completely different take on us. I don't know. So what does that mean? Basically, it will make it easier to aim down sights, less wobble, less jank. You know, on the flip side of that, and the people I've seen who have not been happy about this, feel that it takes away the control. 
it takes away basically a unique part of what makes a VR weapon a VR weapon to wield that you have to that you have to you know align the back size with the front size of the gun and it takes that little bit of skill away now as always I am gonna sit in the fence and I'm gonna say I don't really know what they're going to do I want to see it I want to experience it myself I played an hour of Resident Evil 8 so far and in the tutorial I did notice that kind of snapping up kind of thing I was like what's going on here I don't really my brain didn't register what was happening but it was never like I hate this you know I never got that I haven't really heard many people complaining about that yet if big if once again if that is what is happening so it is something I want to give First Contact Entertainment the benefits of the doubt. I don't want to be jumping to conclusions. I don't want to jump to conclusions, basically. For all I know, I love us. And considering we cannot have an aim controller, you know, maybe it is the next best thing because there are times in Pavlov, you know, not often, not awful often, I'm getting better. The more practice, the better I'm getting. But there are times when my hands are not lined up correctly and I get a little bit frustrated. So you can imagine when you're in the tense game of Firewall and Firewall is a more tactical tense. You don't want to be having any kind of basic issues like that. I mean, even with Firewall Zero Hour, the aim controller, while it felt amazing, the tracking was not perfect. It was still using the light-based tracking. How many times did we have the drift? How many times did we have to shake the aim controller to get it to track correctly? And if this eliminates that kind of frustration, any kind of controller-based frustration, then I'm definitely going to give it a shot, you know? But anyway, that is like one of the biggest talking points about this whole article, I think. So let me know your thoughts in the comments about this particular point and uh, we can we can discuss or feel free to join the discord as well and have a chat about there so the next part here is a question about eye tracking as you can see i've highlighted basically the entire response because i feel like the whole thing is important so they're asking how will firewall ultra make use of eye track there is the weapon select wheel which we've seen uh, which is a ui element that allows you to switch weapons by looking at them and the mechanic for aim and grenade throws so we've seen both of those already those are really the tip of the iceberg as the entire experience has been designed to leverage eye tracking in subtle but helpful ways, which is the way I think eye tracking is going to work best, is when it's little subtle things that maybe it's like it's selecting things in the menu. It sounds boring. It sounds really boring. It's those little things that when they work fluidly and you notice that they're working, it's like, wow, that's magic. From the menus to some of the detailed nuances of our aiming mechanics, players can harness the immediacy of looking to solve gameplay interactions. We're very excited by the potential to use eye tracking in non-obvious ways. Ways that just make something that is inherently difficult without other physical feedback and make it feel natural in a VR environment. This technology is going to pay huge dividends for not only Firewall Ultra, but all of our future projects as well, such as Solaris Off-World Combat 2, which we just teased. So there's confirmation that Solaris 2 is going to be extensively using uh, the same technology that they're going to be putting into Firewall Ultra, the eye tracking technology, basically. So the next question is, can you talk about the ways First Contact is leveraging what the PlayStation Viewer 2's hardware has to offer? I'll skip down here a little bit. To, we are using a deferred renderer for Firewall Ultra as opposed to the more common forward rendering found in many VR applications. So I was like, what's deferred rendering? What's forward rendering? I don't know. Let me get onto a, a chat AI. I said, explain it like I'm five. Uh, what's the difference, basically? And he says, he or she, it says, in computer graphics, forward rendering is like drawing each object in order while deferred rendering is like collecting information about the objects first and then drawing them all together. Deferred rendering can be more efficient for certain types of pictures and pictures in this case will be games. So it sounds like this deferred rendering technique is a way for them to gain efficiency, maybe free up some resources based on what ChatGPT has told me. So. This has opened up approaches to lighting and material surfaces that really show off the improved resolution and HDR performances. So because of this deferred rendering technique, we are going to get enhanced visuals and you know, the HDR, the colors and all that kind of stuff is gonna be, it sounds like it's gonna be, you know, top tier stuff, triple A stuff. So then they were asked about ray tracing support and while they don't say yes or no, which to me says, you know, maybe no, but they do go into detail about lighting basically because of this. So there is considerable real-time lighting in Ultra and that's been an explicit focus for us. I'm just going to say that wielding a true real-time shadow casting flashlights in virtual reality is an incredibly powerful and immersive tool and I've been saying this for months 
that for whatever reason flashlights is something that has me really excited and it sounds like a stupid thing it sounds like a small little thing but that's going to be one of those things especially with accurately casting lights i mean you're talking about eight flashlights eight flashlights all of them cast in shadows you can make finger puppets you can do kind of stuff like that you can give away your position you know there's a lot of things you could do with that and that could really change the feel something so small as a flashlight attachment could really change a firewall ultra plays compared to firewall zero hour can you talk about how first contact implemented the sophisticated real-time lighting and what it brings to the table so i'm going to skip down here there are two key ways we leverage real-time lighting and both benefit the player enormously the first is to reward player actions with robust effects so this can be the flashlights muzzle flashes explosions etc that makes the combat feel so much more intense and immersive and we all know well not all of us but if you have a psv or two you know that that thing can get bright somebody to, sadly it's bradley who is a VR analyst, but he took a test measurement of the light and how bright they can output on a PS VR 2, and he tested it as like 265 nits. Nits is a unit of measurement for lights, basically, and you compare that with the Quest Pro, which has cost $1,500, well, it doesn't anymore, but it did cost $1,500 like a few days ago, and that was only like 100 nits or something like that. So this is producing the brightest brights of any headset, I think. So when you keep that in mind, and you think you're firing a gun, think of the muzzle flash, flash bang grenades, you know, explosions, all that stuff. Combine that with HDR as well, where you got really black blacks and then popping with all these bright effects. Maybe you'll die from a seizure. Maybe. But if it happens, it happens. You can die happy knowing that the rest of us are having a fantastic time being immersed in like popping colorful lights and all this kind of stuff. The other is to use real time lights for dramatic effect in the environment. With environmental lights, we generally look for opportunities to use lights to help players understand the environment better, or for situations where light might be a tactical consideration. So this is something I was theorizing about in the past, where maybe you could shoot out lights and stuff like that to create dark areas for more stealthy approaches and whatnot. Uh, but then they say, by that, we mean you may need to be aware of light and or shadow to gain the upper hand. So they don't confirm or deny that maybe you can interact with light sources that are already on the map. Like maybe turn off generators to cut the power of an area or whatever that would be cool but lights in general is going to be something you have to consider so they're asked to elaborate on the advanced materials they talked about so basically from the weapon you are holding in your hands to every surface your flashlight reflects off you will notice tiny pox scares scratches etc so i think you can expect firewall ultra to be visually a generational leap over firewall zero hour and i really liked firewall zero hour visually i thought when you held the gun to your face in firewall zero hour it was like it looked amazing real life but they're adding to us it. it's going to get crazy so then they're asked about how they're implementing hdr high dynamic range which means you know basically brighter brights darker darks so for ultra our first principle for the game was light slash dark gameplay so this was like a design principle that they had in mind that they were going to base it around light and dark so having a consistent and high quality hdr screen is essential for this more than in any flat game we can be confident of the black levels and lean into the detail far more heavily why is that important because when you're playing any other game the developers don't know what kind of television you're playing on so because of that they have to you know take it easy when it comes to hdr in certain certain scenarios whereas with firewall ultra first contact entertainment know exactly what kind of screen you're going to be using everyone's got oleds everyone's got hdr everyone has the fresnel lenses that allows for hdr on it to take place so they can design the game with that in mind in terms of how they light levels and stuff like that so firewall ultra can be truly bespoke as they say on digital foundry for the psvr2 so i highlighted this question not really for the answer but basically because it's an interest in fact i thought first contact entertainment built firewall ultra using unreal engine 5 making it not only one of the first vr games to use the engine but also one of the earliest unreal engine 5 games period so i think that's important not only as like a, a cool achievement for first contact entertainment but something we should keep in mind as we're waiting for this that they're working with a brand new engine that not many other people have been working well a few other people are working with it of course but everyone's kind of you know figuring things out as they go along especially when you take into account that they're also making a virtual reality game in unreal engine 5 and that narrows you know how many other people they can ask for help and whatnot so even horizon uh, call of the mountain was unreal engine but i think it was only unreal engine 4 so first contact you know breaking new ground basically 
with this game. And when they were asked why they used Unreal Engine 5, is one of the answers, it's the focus on lighting again. We're talking about lighting again and again. So particularly forward thinking, real time approaches that were most intriguing. Additionally, we see Firewall Ultra as principally a live game, a game that lives for several years. Now, this shouldn't be too shocking, but it's nice to get confirmation that they do plan on supporting this game in the long term. We know that they probably will because Firewall Zero Hour was supported for four years, you know, four and a half years, something like that. And of course, Unreal Engine 5 will allow them for future proofing. So where they say future proofing, our engine choice was an important factor. So things that don't work in VR now in Unreal Engine 5, maybe in a year or two, they will work. Maybe First Contact can put a patch out to activate certain features or whatnot. And then all of a sudden they breathe some new life into Firewall Ultra two years down the line or some pure speculation, of course. But so then they jump back. This interview is a little bit out of order, I feel. It's gone a little bit all over the place, but the question here is Firewall Ultra uses a fully deferred rendering pipeline, which is the thing we already talked about with ChatGPT, which is rare for a viewer title. How does this benefit the game and what challenges presented themselves going this route? So First Contact responded with the biggest benefits is the fidelity and authenticity of the surfaces of objects. So again, stuff is going to look real nice. It's going to stand up to inspection, basically, because in virtual reality, you're going to be looking at things more than you would be in a flat game most of the time. Uh, so that's really nice to hear that they're taking that into account. It's not something that folks are always going to focus on, but especially with real time lighting, the environment just feels that bit more immersive or concrete. One of the most immediate things players will notice is the crazy amount of detail that the weapons display. It's one thing looking at a weapon from the same rear facing view in a flat game and an entirely different experience when you are literally holding it in your hands. Again, everything's going to feel real, feel grounded. High detail is going to stand up to virtual reality. So this last point I thought was a little bit interesting because it touches on the PVE. And if you follow their Twitter account, you might notice that they've been kind of teasing that they're testing the PVE right now and that maybe it's more enhanced over Firewall zero hour that they've improved it in some ways so the question is were there any unreal engine tools or features that were helpful in developing firewall ultra and the answer is okay this isn't obvious from a viewer perspective but we've been using environment query system so then i was like what is this we look it up environment query system is a feature within the artificial intelligence system in unreal engine 4 that is used to collect data from the environment. Now, of course, it says Unreal Engine 4, but we can assume it's Unreal Engine 5 as well, obviously. EQS queries can be used to instruct AI characters to find the best possible location that will provide a line of sight to a player in order to attack the nearest health or ammo pickup or where the closest cover point, among other possibilities. So, with that in mind, we've been using EQS extensively in our PVE mode. It's allowed us to craft an almost endless variety of encounters with a highly efficient scenario setup. So that sounds fascinating to me. If you play PvE on Firewall Zero Hour, it's basically you and up to three friends, so a total of four, up against kind of endless wave of bots until you hack a laptop. It was fun, you could have fun with that, and sometimes it was hard. But more or less, you knew when a bot was going to do something or, you know, they kind of they kind of just ran towards you, basically. But with this, they're talking about an endless variety of encounters with a highly efficient scenario setup. Maybe they can be more detailed. Maybe the AIs don't just rush towards you now. Maybe they are more intelligent, do more interesting things, have more tactics available to them and spice it up a little bit. And finally, our PvE mode has been rebuilt, extended, refined polished and all of that in comparison to firewall zero hour so there is an emphasis an improvement and a lot of consideration going into the pve mode for firewall ultra so i'm becoming more interested in that as we get closer to the launch of firewall ultra whenever that is and of course they're asked when is that coming out and the answer is later this year which we knew already we knew it was coming 2023 we just don't know when but hopefully we'll get some kind of information very, very soon. Of course, there's always rumors of a Sony showcase or whatever. So keep in mind, this is a Sony first party title. So if there is a showcase, there's a good chance that Firewall Ultra's release date could be revealed 
at it. And so that is the end of the interview between Unreal and First Contact Entertainment. Let me know in the comments your thoughts on this entire interview or if there's anything in particular that stood out. Or maybe there was something here that I didn't go into detail on that you think I should have. Feel free to bring that up and maybe it's something I can talk about in a future Firewall Ultra video. If you like this content, if you want to learn more about Firewall Ultra, if you want to see Firewall Ultra streams when the game comes out or just PSVR 2 in general, then be sure to hit subscribe, like all the usual YouTube and shites. I don't like to ask, I don't like to say. Let me thank Decepticon for letting me use his music in all of my videos. Thank you, as always, for watching Petrifying Pumpkins. And uh, I'll see you in the next one. Please stay nice and moist.